if you are seeing this, then it is the absolute first time I've done this, and this was a learning experience for me as it was for you, except I knew about all of this going on in the background, but I didn't know how the game was going to go out about doing it and like doing the calculations in the background. So if you really want to and you did see this, make sure you stick around for episode two about this time next week. G'day gamers and welcome back to Nucleares. You may notice a few things have changed like what is this, what's iodine and xenon and all that sorts of stuff. Back in Nucleares, episode one, here we go again. Third season, let's start her off and let's try and explain some things that have been added and changed and modified and all that sorts of stuff. So the lifetime, life expectancy of some of the waste products that we are now having to deal with in the reactor core, which is that iodine or iodine, whatever you want to call it, and that xenon. So there's two different products for either side of them, and they're usually the 135 and the 136s on both of those xenon and that iodine. So one is good, one is bad, and also another one can be just sitting in your reactor doing absolutely nothing. I'll try and explain as much as I possibly can, as well as what else has been changed. So I'm just gonna start things up, let's get on into it, not going to kind of do too much like the buttons and all that have been switched oh let's not do that and let's just insert that one i didn't want to do that that's what i wanted thank you very much let's get the thermostat on i'm just trying to remember at the same time because it's been such a long time since i did all this and it won't take too long for me to actually get going on it 49 in case we get that objective let's turn the condenser on that's got a bit of room in it let's get the external one on and fill that up the outer core vessels nice and full that's good yep we just need to do that let's turn that on and i might just turn this on to like five or something oh one more thank you and chuck that on just there yeah that should be okay to get that warmed up a bit and a little bit more effective with that vacuum pulled on the uh, concrete towers you see out of nuke facilities. Just turns the steam back into water to get reused in the um, whole cycle all over again. And the boric acid is the new chemicals, or it's not really new anymore. It should be quite familiar on this channel. It is a boric acid injection system pretty much, and that goes into the pressurized reactor core that helps moderate its reactivity aka its temperature so i don't want to bring up any of the temperature at all until i get at least 80 bars on this vessel vessel pressure because we don't want any steam bubbles in our reactor as it's a negative coefficient that's what it's called and it's really bad your reactor and your reactivity likes the water in your primary coolant system and it dumps all that heat into the water where if it's only the steam from that negative coefficient it'll actually delete all that heat kind of thing and just not work out as effectively as it should be in a normal reactor. So we're just coming on over here. We just want to top the condenser off maybe to about 30,000 litres or even just before that and I'll turn the switch off as all the pumps and stuff take time to power down, power up, valves open and close, all that sorts of stuff and more. So that vacuum has been pulled. Very, very nice. I've got my primary coolant system on. I need to get my resistor on. As when we're generating power with our turbine, the power needs to go somewhere before outputting power to the grid or it'll internalize and blow up your steam turbine itself. So let's make sure that doesn't happen at all. We've got the synchroscope here that will need to match what power frequency our generator in the facility is working on compared to where the city's frequency is at at the time so we can sync up and there's no damage when we do finally close this breaker to output power to the grid. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to quickly start operations or request to so I can start outputting power to the grid when they come back. They'll request received and then they'll give me a time. So that's the request received just like that. And they'll give me a time eventually so that should stop right about there that's more than enough for what we need to start actually building this up so since we've got the boric acid 
I need to yank these control rods out of the core to increase the temperature and the reactivity a lot more than what you would normally without the core and the, um, the chemical treatment like the boric acid and things like that. So what we're doing now is that we have a 6.3% chance per second to create what's called iodine. So that's why this is going up. And at the same time, we have a 0.3 chance to create that xenon. So iodine is actually reactive and it is somewhat a little bit good for your reactor, at least in terms compared to the xenon, which is a nuclear reactor poison, or it is actually called, what is it? It's a neutron, oh, I can't remember the name, but we cannot waste any more time. We need to get on and get some power out to the grid nice and stably as soon as possible. As soon as this gets to about 100 degrees, like right about now-ish, we need to turn this on. Let's get O3 on and let's just turn this down to about 40, I think. That should be good. That should start going down. Our condenser pump is nicely filled up. This one is still filling up ever so slowly from an unlimited water supply. And the same with that condenser where this one here that fills this up actually pulls from this tank specifically as well as when you're emptying this out it goes into that tank as well so that fills up and that fills up pulling from that one when you turn that feed water circuit on for that and we've got that for the outer core vessel so that alarm right there is saying we are now producing power and I'm not sure why it needs to go and like make you deaf and all that sorts of stuff just to say yeah you're producing power so heads up thanks for that I appreciate it as we get the reply, 10 a.m. is when they'll be expecting us to be outputting power. And this one right here, your synchroscope will not be able to become active until that 10 o'clock time arrives or whatever time they're ready for it, for that power to be output to you. So right now, I need to slow that temperature rise by decreasing the reactivity a little bit as much as I possibly can come on over here the boric acid is definitely being dumped into the inner core vessel and we're about yeah, 1280 so far out of about 3000 that we'll need to get to to try and get a nice stability in our reactor oh this is actually interactive that is absolutely really really nice this is one of the newer things in the new update as of a couple days ago so 323 we want about 360 and that is well that should be slowly going down eventually how are we going on this very quickly we're going pretty good pretty darn good we are dropping a little bit so let's bring this up a little bit by an extra five and start fighting it a bit more uh, are we producing yes we are let's see if we can crank this all the way open to stop that from blowing up our resistors that has a capacity limit of 5,000, which we are definitely, definitely over. Oh my god, we might need to repair it a little bit, or it might actually blow some of it up. Hopefully that temperature doesn't go too much more than this. About 70, 80 degrees is when it will cause some really big damage. How are we going on that? 370, let's get this to 99, and let's just reset that, so to stop the reactivity and the temperature. This got to about 50-ish. So let's go to about 45. Let that equilibrate and just level out a second. As we want to continuously produce power to bring this number up, but not actually drop this to zero. Let's drop it down to 33. So we're bypassing a third of the steam around our turbines instead of going through it to produce power. So that should eventually start going back up just like that. Thank you very much. And we can get this back up to 37-ish, maybe. How are we going? 26, 25, that's okay. Our temperature, perfect. The condenser level is A-OK. -okay. Still dosing it. We're going up ever so slowly. That number comes up every minute or so. So we've got 376, 375. Reactivity is just below that. So let's see if we can go this to 95. So we don't stall our reactor kind of thing. There we go, that should jump up a little bit more. Good, good, good. It's now about the time we need to start ejecting these out to bring this up because our boric acid, that's kind of working the same way, but in a liquid form as your control rods, is actually kind of overtaking the reactivity that we're going through. 
There we go, we're producing nice stable power. It's two minutes before, let's see if we can kind of dump out a little bit more. Let's go back to 33, that should be okay. Maybe start increasing this just a little bit more. And we're almost at the 22,000. Just like that, perfect timing. That's going absolutely crazy, but it should start slowing down once we get the actual RPM on our turbine that has been set at 3060. Um, that should be the absolute standard, and it did used to be here before. So once that kind of stables out a little bit more and speeds up a bit, there we go, it's starting to slow down. 30.52. See if we can close them down a little bit. Put a little bit more through. Generator. Let's see if we can raise it a little bit. They did actually in do, they did do a dynamic by holding the alt button, which is what I'm doing now. It's just a little bit faster. So I should be able to increase the voltage to make it go around faster, around clockwise. Oh, that might be the temperature. That is the temperature. It uh, did do quite a bit more, and that boric acid still hasn't caught up yet. That's okay. We can just bring that down. 2207. 3060. Let's bring this back up before we go over the 5000, which we did not blow up. Thank you very much. I'm not too sure why this won't let me do it. It won't let me... It is... Closed. Yeah, it is open, so this should be... Allowing me to do it. Okay, I guess it just will do that there. See if I can open it back up. Lower the voltage a bit, because it's not exactly where it needs to be, and I want it to be nice and stable if possible. That should be fine close that breaker. So now we are outputting power to the grid and we can start closing our bypasses off and create as much power as we possibly can because the city is demanding 57.91. That's not too bad. 450. Reactivity should be dropping. We just need to get an equilibrium on our boric acid which it is starting to get into the green which is very very nice that it's doing that. That's good. We can come on over here turn our generator on to automatic just like so. So what we need to start figuring out and fighting is the iodine and the xenon. So what actually happens is that the half-life or the time it takes for it to degrade at least half of it, its production over the certain time. There's a lot of equations that need to go into it because obviously each second that passes doesn't have the exact same reactivity or temperature as the previous second or minute or even hour, etc, etc. So the way that means is that whatever is produced after in this game, it goes by an average equal six hours, but in real life it is a 6.6 .6 hour half-life, which will turn that iodine into xenon-135, which is somewhat okay. It can be just chilling in your reactor kind of thing and that eventually like breaks down into like xenon 136 and all that sorts of stuff then oh yeah it's just really kind of difficult to kind of wrap your head around how everything kind of works um, but that's really interesting that that happened hmm All right, so let's bring this back down as we're starting to drop our reactivity. And I want 360 degrees, even though that is definitely a little bit higher than what I'd like. It will overall help us in the long run to generate a bit more power. So I'll keep that all as is. And our temperature in this is raising. Yeah, not even really raising, to be honest. We're dropping that temperature, and the way this all sorts of works is the iodine and the xenon. So the iodine is somewhat radioactive, as I said, and that will break down in-game after about six hours, and then it turns into that xenon, aka the reactor poison, 
that word I was trying to search for earlier. Thank you, Editor Sharpie. So what that does overall is that the iodine actually helps you start your reactor up kind of thing as it is radioactive, but the xenon is not. It is an actual radioactive or reactor poison and stops any temperature rays in the system. So as I said, iodine every second has a 6.3% chance to actually be created. At the same time, the xenon has a 0.3% chance of being created at the same time. So there's a lot more iodine being created than there is xenon. So it is a lot easier to start your reactor up now with this than it was previously. Come on over here. We have stopped inputting that because we are at three. And that is what the game really wants you to be at. Yeah, very, very interesting. So it really does want you to control both. Hmm. It's just I'm also figuring all of this out at the same time, and I hope I haven't confused you on this. If not, go and watch this video in the top right-hand corner of your screen right now. That'll explain it in a lot more simpler details. We are producing more than what the power city or whatever they want is demanding and we're only getting about 79%. So let's see if we can start dumping as much power as we can into the city by just turning off our resistors and actually raise this number up as we can. So I think even now I might be able to do that like that and keep that above 90%. I'm perfectly happy. It will then, oh, there's 80%. So let's just crank that back off again speed it up in a bit of time because we are in normal we will get penalized if we over um overestimate or overdo the demand of power to the city's grid by at least 10 percent so if this gets at 110 percent then we will get penalized for it in the future Um, yeah, I think that is just about as much as I can. If you are seeing this, then it is the absolute first time I've done this, and this was a learning experience for me as it was for you, except I knew about all of this going on in the background, but I didn't know how the game was going to go out about doing it and, like, doing the calculations in the background. So if you really want to and you did see this, make sure you stick around for episode two about this time next week. Make sure you stay sharp till next time. Like, comment, subscribe. Any of your thoughts as I do reply to any and all comments. So please do that if you are curious on anything you've seen. Till then, make sure you stay sharp. As always, see ya.